Hello and welcome to another podcast episode of My Knitwear. My name is Imbriel, I live in the Netherlands. Yeah, and I like to knit, so I make knitting podcasts. Uh, I just got a nice takeaway coffee from my favorite, favorite coffee place just around the corner. And it's a beautiful Monday. Um, and it has been sunny and then it's going to be cloudy again. So it's kind of crazy. But right now I'm right in the shade. We'll see when the sun moves, but let's just not think about that too much. I hope you have a nice coffee or tea or water, whatever you want. And let's just get started. All right, it's been a month since I have made an, one of these videos, one of these podcast episodes. So there's a lot that I have to show you. A lot of things that I've finished, starting with what I'm wearing. And this is my Advent project. And it is the Stripe Hype Pullover by Kutifakika or Veronica Lindberg. And I love it. I have made this throughout the month of December and I have finished it just past New Year's when I was in Minnesota where my boyfriend's family lives. I love it. I have knitted it with Artemis Yarns, the advent of 2023, so last December, and I had the weekend advent. What I did, I had the four colors of the weekend advent for uh, that I used for this. Sorry, I feel a little out of practice, but we'll get into it. <laughs> um, and I have used, this is the first color, second color, third color, and then the fourth color here in the sleeves. And then for this, these last few stripes, I combined all of the colors together. Good to know, this whole sweater is knitted with two strands held together throughout, so two fingering weight strands. Um, this is Lang Yewo in this cobalt blue colorway. And um, yeah, so all these contrasting stripes I also held two strands together. So what I did for the helical knitting, I held the orange and the blue together and the uh, yellow and the pink, and I did helical knitting in these stripes. So yeah, it creates this beautiful new color uh, that matches really well with the rest of the sweater. So I'm really happy with that. Uh, alterations that I made, I made the extra large but I'm off gauge, and after blocking it really isn't that big of a difference. I think my uh, gauge is 21 stitches and the pattern says to have 20. So yeah, <laughs> it's not that big of a difference, but it was a really big difference when I tried it on when I was knitting on it. And I thought it wasn't going to be a good fit, but right now I'm just super happy with it and uh, it fits really, really well. Um, yeah, so the extra large, but I casted on a few less stitches under the arm because I thought it was going to be too big but it wasn't. And then I picked up the stitches for the arms of the medium. So then you also have to do something else with the arm depth. So for the arm depth, I also did the medium size. So that's all I did. And I did a folded color collar. Um, yeah, that is not in the pattern. It's uh, just a regular color with a bind off here but I folded it over and I'm really happy that I did. I think it looks really nice and classy. Um, all of my notes are in my Ravelry page if you wanna know how I did certain things. Although I don't think I'd describe exactly how I did the helical knitting, so <laughs> yeah. But I have been wearing this sweater every single day, like literally every single day. So yeah, it's a big, big win. And I love it. Um, yeah, I love all the different colors and I love how maximalist it is. Also, um, I would really recommend this pattern for more of a beginner pattern. It's really easy to follow, no short rows. It's really straightforward and the stripes make it go super fast. So 
I knew that I had to do one color per week because then I every weekend I would unwrap another um, skein of yarn. If, if you've seen my Vlogmas videos, you know what I'm talking about. So it was really nice to have just those few stripes to do. You knew exactly where you were going. And uh, yeah, then it was time for the next few stripes. So it was really good to knit through all that. And yeah, I'm super happy with it after blocking. I mean, I was scared that it was gonna be too small, but then uh, after blocking it, I really realized that Superwash does grow when you're uh, blocking. So happy with that. I have some more finished objects to show you. These I have been wearing a lot and it looks a little worn, but that's okay. Um, so my riverbed socks are finished and um, yeah, they have been wearing, uh, I have been wearing them a lot and they have been doing great, although they kind of look like a slipper now. Um, so I, these were work in progress for such a long time and I finished them on the 31st of December while I was on my holiday. And it was great to have nice warm socks in Minnesota. So it was great. I have knitted these with um, the blue strand is from Spin Knits, uh, which is a yarn shop in South Africa. And I held it together with two strands of mohair for extra durability. And I used one strand of the Dropskit Silk and one strand of African Expressions Hope. And the African Expressions Hope has a polyester um, like strand. So it's not a kit silk, it's like a mohair polyester blend. That's the purple that you can kind of see going on. And then the gray one was the kit silk uh, from Drops. Yeah, uh, a DK weight sock was toe uh, bottom down. <laughs> I always get confused with socks. Cuff down, cuff down socks. And this is a pattern from the 52 Weeks of Socks book. And it's the one pattern that's in the on the front page. Um, yeah, I don't think there's that much more to tell you about it. I was just happy that I finally finished them. And I am wearing them a lot. They have been shedding a bunch and there's like a lot of these things that I can pick off. So it's like pilling and there's like if you go to the inside, there's a bunch of like stuff like this, just whole mohair fluff just coming off. Put that away so it doesn't get in my coffee. <laughs> um, yeah, great pattern, nice and cozy socks. Uh, I really like the cable. So this cable is not actually a cable. You just move stitches around by doing knit two togethers and yarn overs. So, or SSKs. So they're different for the two socks. So I don't know if you can tell, but one goes one way and then the other goes the other way. So there's a different chart for the left and the right sock. I knitted them two at a time, by the way, which is really a great way of making socks because then once you finish one, you finish both. So yeah, not that much to, else to show you or to tell you about it. And the funny thing is the bottom, really all the mohair is like gone. So all the fluff, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's really sturdy though. Ah. Anyway, have you ever knitted any mohair socks and what is your opinion about them. I quite like them, although it kind of feels a little more like dirty, like there's more dirt uh, on them or something. Like all the fluff holds more dust and everything. But let me know if you have any opinion about the mohair socks. I, they're, they wear really nicely. So yeah. Another finished object um is my balaclava which is the uh i'll put it on 
Um, it is the Yolo Clava by Typical Bliss, who is Tiffany Liu. She has a YouTube channel. And um, uh, she did a little knit along on her live streams and I thought I would join. And then I made this cute little balaclava. So uh, yeah, I used three strands held together and I did the Lerke Bacher um, striping stuff with leftovers, uh, which is really not that like that big of a deal. That's I have the book, the close knit book by Lerke Bacher. And then she describes how she does it, but you're literally just knotting together uh, strands of yarn. That's also how she says it. It's like, it's not that difficult. You just, just tie knots. <laughs> it's her slogan. All right, the camera fell. We're back. Um, I knitted this with three strands held together. One was uh, fingering weight, and I have it here for another project. Fingering weight, uh, sock yarn, laying your wool in the white. The other one was drops alpaca silk, brushed alpaca silk uh, in this light blue, like kind of grayish colorway. And then the other strand was a DK weight leftover strand. So that's all the different colors that you can see. Um, it's some fingering held together some yeah all these leftovers that i had and some odd balls of yarn that i just used for this and this is great i say get a balaclava if you're ever like too cold with a hat on outside um knit a balaclava it is so good like now when i am wearing just a hat and i'm outside and it's cold I miss my balaclava because it's so nice to have this uh, covered. It's nice to have this covered. It's so much better than a hat. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would really recommend if you feel comfortable wearing this outside, obviously. It's funny because here in the Netherlands, I feel a little less uh, comfortable to wear this outside. And when I was visiting uh, my in-laws, I didn't care at all. <laughs> uh going outside or going anywhere i guess it's just because you don't know anybody you're like oh, this is me <laughs> i'm wearing balaclava um but yeah i would definitely wear it anyway still here yeah so a really nice uh pattern so the pattern hasn't actually been released i think her idea was to do a knit along and then release the pattern on her website but i don't think she has yet but it's a really basic balaclava pattern. So if you feel like doing something like this, I think there's, I've shared some free ones before in one of those free pattern videos. So I'll link that one down below. I think it was called like BB balaclava or something. I'll link that one down in the description box if you're interested in a free pattern. Um, yeah. Then there's something else to show you. And if you've seen my Everything I Knit in 2023 video, you will have seen these, but I have done some uh, <laughs> crocheting. I've done some amigurumi making. So um, my brother-in-law got all the girls um, a crochet kit and for my mother-in-law, he got a this beginner-friendly, uh, like, mini penguin uh, kit, and she was following the instructions. It was really, really thorough uh, instruction, like manual, how to crochet this if you're a complete beginner. So I just downloaded the pattern and I made this one first. So this is a little wheezy. Um, if you've seen Toy Story, you know what I'm talking about. So this is a little wheezy and it's a little smaller than the pattern is inst instructed, but I used a smaller crochet hook. And then I uh, made my own uh, crochet kit, which was the llama. And this one we call Truffle. Uh, Truffle the llama. And the mouth or the snout, it's a little crooked, but I felt like that was very, uh, applicable for a little llama because they always have their mouth a little bit like that, you know? 
So really cute. We had a whole saga of uh, the llama went missing after we had a like a little party for New Year's and then he, uh, she or he, I don't know, it <laughs> was found in the snow outside and uh, the dog found it and it was like a whole story. Um, and then she came back and then the Wheezy wasn't alone anymore. So yeah, these two have been hanging out uh, <laughs> ever since. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with it. I just have some cute little stuffed animals, I guess. Um, I don't know, it's cute to make though. So might be more to come. And then I did one more, uh, although I haven't put the eyes on yet, but I made a little Charmander. So uh, yeah, with some yarn that uh, my boyfriend's mom had. Uh, and then I ran out, so then I used this other yarn and yeah, it's just pretty cute. And I didn't want to put just those like safety eyes on because I felt like it needs a little more personality than that. So I want to embroider some eyes on, but I just haven't been doing that. But here's my little amigurumi. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, all my amigurumi that I made. So yeah, that's uh, some other finished objects. Super fun to make. Um, it was the first time doing amigurumi for me, although I have been crocheting a bunch. Um, I'm actually pretty hot. So I'm gonna take off my sweater and then you'll see the other thing that I am wearing, which is the Colette tee. This is a pattern by Vitre Design and I love wearing this one, um, but it's a little hot and I'm sitting in the sun and it's finally heating up here after uh, a lot of days of really, really cold weather. I knitted the Coletti in Sundeskarn Duo. And here's one other little rant in my head, but I have been wanting to make the Poisoned Apple Top by Lily Kate Designs or Lily Kate France. And I have bought this yarn, this white, um, I have it here. I bought this yarn a long time ago, Novita Woolly Wood, uh, and it has tensile and uh, Merino. Yeah, it's like 70% tensile from uh, bamboo and 30% merino. And I thought it would be great for a t-shirt because then it wouldn't be too hot. But now I have a little bit more experience and I know that uh, bamboo yarn will be very drapey and very, like it won't hold structure. And I do want to have the poison apple top in the structured yarn. So I'm thinking I might buy some Sunday's Garn Duo but then I went on this website and I haven't, I haven't thought of sharing this on here at all. So this is very unscripted, not that I have a script, but. <laughs> and then I found this website that had another yarn that has the exact same composition as Sunday's Garn Duo. And I wanted to ask you guys if, well, I just thought of that, but if you guys have experience with that yarn and I'll put it on the screen. I can also look it up quick because I always have my laptop around when I'm doing this, just in case. I can't find it. Um, I'll put it on the screen uh, because I think I have it saved on my work laptop <laughs> when I was searching for yarn. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm the only one. <laughs> mm. All right, that was my little rant, but I, my question is, do you have any experience with using that yarn? Because I wanna know if it's like similar to this one, because I really like the way that this yarn is holding up um, because I've been wearing this Coletti so much. So yeah, I just wanna know if there's more like this one. Uh, and I feel like we're gonna have to take a little break soon or I'm gonna have to move over. All right. I feel like I'm gonna have a hard time uh, editing this video because I have been, I don't know what's going on, but 
I had this crazy idea. It was, well, it wasn't, it's not too crazy. I mean, it's knitting. <laughs> what can be too crazy about it? But um, it was like the 14th of January. It is the 22nd now. Yeah, so a few days ago. And I saw this video um, of Alexa Sunshine 83. And she makes styling videos. I sometimes watch them just for the fun of it. Um, and then she had this talk about sweaters and things and I don't know even what she was talking about but she shared this uh photo of this girl wearing a sweater and it was machine knit you know one of those store-bought sweaters and it had this little detail on it with f flowers in pots but the flower was a heart and not a flower so I saw that and I thought Oh my God, that would be the perfect Valentine's Day sock. So I made it. <laughs> so here is my own pattern. Um, these are the Blossoming Hearts socks um, by me. And I asked some people to test it for me. So there, it, it is in testing right now as we speak. I'm super happy with how it's looking. And um, yeah, I love the little flower pots, the little leaves, the little hearts. And I just wanted to keep it simple. So I just made a plain white sock and yeah, it's blowing out a little bit, but I made my favorite heel, which is this honeycomb type of heel. This, this is like honeycomb style. And then I have some like garter stitches next to it. So it feels really neat. And I love the way that it looks. Um, the yarn that I've been using, I've been using Lang Yawol in the super white one. And that one has a little strand of yarn to reinforce the heel and the toe. So I think you can tell, yeah. See, the toe has some extra thickness to it it's because I held it together with the reinforcement thread and the toe does too I gotta say I do not love this yarn for the whole body of the sock um, and like I said I made this sweater also in that same combination uh, over the same yarn so the blue is also lanyable and I'm really happy with how it works up in a sweater but as a single strand on 2.25 millimeter needles, it is a little holy, if that makes sense. Like, um, it's, it's a really thin sock yarn. So, and I feel like it's crazy that with 2.25, uh, you can, it's so see-through, but doesn't make it less fun <laughs> to have the socks. Um, the hearts are Regia uh, Schachenmeier, Regia uh, Vierfertig, which is me for fly. It's German. This is me doing my best German. It's actually pretty funny. I don't really speak German. I'm really bad at German, even though it's so similar to Dutch. So I know there's a lot of other Dutch people watching these videos. Hello. <laughs> Do you have the same problem? Because I feel like I had German in school, but I just like didn't understand it at all. It was so difficult to learn and I stuck to French, Spanish and English. That was it. Anyway, <laughs> Regia uh, for ply in this red colorway. Uh, the color number is 20 by four if you want to have one of those like really perfect reds this is the one because they have different reds but this is I think the best one and then the leaves are in Lanyewol in sage green um, colorway 0191 everything is in my Ravelry too I always put down my yarns because otherwise I'll forget and I'm very organized when it comes to that. And then I have this as a little pop of color at the top and the uh, pots. Uh, and this is 
Uh, I know the colorway is called Transcendence and it was from Stranded Dye Works, their BFL sock, I think. Everything is in my project page, which I'll link down below. And it will also be in the pattern because this is my sample. And speaking of samples, I am knitting a second sample. So um, I was debating whether or not to cast on the second sock for that pair or to make a second sample to have more to share because I want to sh like finish this pattern and release it before the 14th of February, Valentine's Day, because I feel like it's like a perfect Valentine's Day pattern. Um, but it's also perfect for spring. I mean, you don't have to, like, you can always wear socks with hearts on them. But I feel like it's like a cute thing for Valentine's Day. If someone wants to cast on for Valentine's Day or have, maybe I should start planning this, but maybe have like a week before. I don't know. What do you think? Is it like more fun to have a Valentine's Day pattern released on Valentine's Day? Or is it more fun that people can knit it so they can wear it on Valentine's Day? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it might be nicer to be able to knit it, but like, I'm almost also thinking like marketing wise, you know, then it makes sense to release it on Valentine's Day. What do you think? What do you want? What do you think people will do? I don't know. Okay. I am not good at this. I'm, I'm just a hobbyist that also makes knitting patterns and make podcasts. But anyway, um, I have started <laughs> this mini start for a new sock and warning this is going to be bright. I'm using this while well, it's not even picking it up. Um, I'm using this super bright neon yellow uh, sock yarn, also by Lane, uh, Lane Yarns Yowol. And I am holding it together with the second strand, like the reinforcement strand uh, in the cuff too. And what I want to do for this one, because one of my testers did that, she did the cuff part in a different color. So she had the little like thing at the top, the little stripe, and then uh, sort of a little pop of color. Then she did the cuff in a different color, and then she did the uh, color work. <laughs> so what I wanna do is, uh, well, I did the pop of color at the top that in my pattern actually matches with the pots. But this time I want to do the pop of color matching with the hearts. So I have this, this yarn from Artemis Yarns left over from my sweater. So I'm going to use this for the hearts. So there's going to be pink hearts. And that's the pop of color. I'm going to do the cuff, the heel and the toe in the neon yellow. Then I'm going to, oh, I had it here, but I left it in the hallway. Uh, I'm going to do the whole base of sort of main color of the sock. I'm going to do that in beige and then I'm going to do the leaves in a dark green. And I think that would work really well together. Like it's kind of wild to have neon yellow with beige, but I watched, <laughs> this is like one of my hobbies to watch, interior design shows. I love watching them. So I watched everything I could find on Netflix and I even like went to all these sketchy websites to watch more of those shows because I love it so much. But there was like something like Brit Brit Britain's new interior designer or something it was called. And there was this woman who eventually won and her idea was to do neon yellow with putty, putty and something else. And then all of the uh, judges were like, well, that doesn't sound very good, not nice. And then it turned out to be brilliant. So I'm channel channeling the inner <laughs> British design, interior design show. I don't know. I just think it's, it will work together. And otherwise, uh, it's okay. That's fun. I, I feel like this one is a little more like appealing 
to more people. And then this one will be the wild one that shows my maximalist style, even though I love these, they're so cute. How nice to wear these and then just have this popping up. Oh, I love it. I saw, okay, I'm really getting in a rambly mode now, but that's okay. You're watching and knitting right now, so it's okay. Um, I saw these Dr. Martens, uh, like Mary Jane styles with a little flower on it. And I'm in love with them and I saw them online on sale but they're not in my size. So I put my email down to get an email when they're back in stock. And I've had that email twice now, but then every time I go to the website, they're sold out again. And I think if you wear these socks with the cute little Mary Jane style shoes, so cute, I think. Perfect for spring. And it doesn't matter if it's Valentine's Day or not. <laughs> yeah, so I really want to finish these as soon as I can, we'll at least have two socks, whether it be the same style or two different ones. So then I can take some pictures and then release it. I think the pattern is already pretty much good to go. I haven't had many comments from my testers and people have been making them already. So I feel like we're good. I also wrote the pattern in that one day when I thought of this pattern. So I wrote my pattern and then I made my pattern. So I was also my own tester. It wasn't like I made the socks, did some scribbles and then uh, released it to testers. I wrote the pattern and then I made my pattern. Uh, and then I knitted my pattern. So I think we're pretty good. This will be my second sock that will be released and I'm super happy with them. I think they're super cute and uh, I was a little nervous that maybe there was something out there like this already. Um, but I don't know. I couldn't find anything like it. So yeah. And, uh, I hope you like them too. I, uh, I'm, especially when I see them on camera, I just realize how cute they are. So yeah, super happy with those. Now I'm thinking, should I stay in the sock? area or go somewhere else. I think I'll go somewhere else because maybe you have been seeing this in the background the whole time. This is the Sunless Garn uh, Soft for Women book. Uh, this is a little magazine booklet from Sunless Garn. This was the one from 2022 February and this one has been very popular because of a few designs in there. There's the Amy slipover. And there's the Guernsey Genser. And I have made the Amy slipover last year. It was my birthday cast on. So March 8th, I started it and then I finished it pretty quickly. And I love it. I wear it all the time. Talked about it in my all my knits in 2023. So if you're interested, you can look there or just look at my project notes because I did some alterations. And last year when I bought the booklet, I also bought yarn for the Guernsey Genser as a present for my boyfriend. And I did that a year ago. So I already thought of making it last year. And his birthday is the day after Valentine's Day. So I have two, like, there's like this one deadline for all of my knits then because I'm making the Guernsey Genser for my boyfriend and I have joined in the round. There it is. I, uh, yeah, I joined in the round. And so I made the back, I made the front. Uh, I did the lattice uh, st stitch on the back and on the front. And I love it. I don't think you see I hope now, now I hope that the sun will come again because I want to show you how beautiful this yarn looks. Um, because now it just looks dark blue-ish. But actually, and I'll put out a yarn 
a ball of yarn. Actually, and there we have a little bit of sunlight. <laughs> um, it is this beautiful uh, mix of blue and green. And I feel like, so it's Drops Nepal. I feel like the website of Drops really shows it really well. Um, where you can see all the colors in there. So if you look at the sweater, you can really look at it for a long time and just discover all the different colors in there. And it's just gorgeous. I really, really love this yarn a lot. It's so pretty, but you guys know I love blues and greens. So this is right up my alley and I, yeah, I bought this a year ago when we were in South Africa and we were traveling and I was just like in that brainstorm mindset of like, oh, what do I want to knit? And I saw all the videos of Anna Passi Trevino. She has a podcast on YouTube, highly recommend. Uh, she makes beautiful garments and she had that booklet and she showed all these things that she made from it. She has made so many patterns from there. So she inspired me to buy that booklet. And then I was thinking, oh, I should make the Guernsey Genser for my boyfriend. I saw a lot of people making the Ingrid sweater man for their boyfriend or the Moby sweater was just released then, I think. Um, so then I said to my boyfriend like, oh, should I make you this one, the Guernsey Genser, uh, which is very similar to the Ingrid sweater. And uh, well, the Moby sweater is a little different, but uh, and then he was like excited about it too. So when we were in the car, like traveling, we were going a really long uh, distance that day, um, like 12 hours in the car or something. I like bought the yarn because they kept having it out of stock in every store. And then I bought the yarn um, in the car in South Africa to get delivered for when I would get back because that was like a final few days that we were there. Um, so I've had this in stash for a really long time. And there's the sun. So maybe you can see all the different colors now. It's just blow blowing out. I'll see if I can take a little video where you can see the colors better or I'll just put the drops picture on the screen. But anyway, I have 19 balls of this and it might sound like a lot, but it's 75 meters. So it's something 1400 meters, I think. So I only have enough yarn for the size large. And I thought my boyfriend is super big, but this pattern has so much positive ease in it that a large is fine. Uh, I just maybe need to knit the body a little longer because the, the sleeves are way too long in the pattern. I've seen everybody on uh, Ravelry on their project pages have uh, shorten the sleeves by a whole section. So there's like four sections in the body. So this is one and then two, three, four, five, uh, four. And I'm gonna do a fifth one, I think. Um, and then for the sleeves, they do an extra one. So you start with the lattice, uh, lattice with L-A-T-T-I-C-E um, on the sleeve. And then you do the other ones and then there's like the last one you do similar to the top here. But no one has done that because it's way too long. But my boyfriend is super tall. So two meters tall is big too. So uh, yeah, I would think I had to knit him a lot, but all the female patterns have so much positive ease that this the large will fit him fine. I've put it on top of his other sweater that I've knit for him. Um, yeah, and it, it looks fine. Where was I going? <laughs> okay, coffee break. Okay, <laughs> 19 balls of yarn. Uh, I hope it's enough. I thought um, it would be maybe too much because it felt like ordering so much yarn. And they actually, I should have just bought 20 because apparently they come in balls of 20 or like bags of 20. They just send me this with it like tear it up with one ball taken out <laughs> and i thought oh i felt bad i don't know i just felt bad for them having to do that i don't know i almost felt like it was like a statement like 
why didn't you order 20? And I thought, oh, I, I didn't know that you guys had them in quantities of 20 because then I would have just gotten 20 and then, I don't know, it would have been nice to have it in a bag and I wouldn't feel how I feel now that I think that maybe I don't have enough yarn. So yeah, because what I, where I am now on this, um, which is like here, right? Like right at your boobs. Um, I'm, I think I just finished my sixth ball of yarn. Like here is the end of it. I think it was the sixth. I'm just gonna count the balls quick. So one, two, three. Yep, I have 13 left, so I have used up six. And um, that means I'm like a third, a little under a third on the way. So I can do this two more times. That's basically what it means. So this one more time here and then the sleeves. I don't know if I'll have enough, but we'll see. I also think before I'm going to add any length to the body, I'm going to block it and um, it will probably grow a lot because there's all these. So between every section, you have three of these uh, stripes with uh, reverse stockinettes. So like pearl rows um, and they will stretch out a lot. And there's going to be like a section with cables and garter, uh, just garter stitch. And that will stretch out more. The lattice will also relax. Uh, yeah. By the way, just to be encouraging, I don't think this is that hard. So um, not to be bragging. But I feel like a lot of people have been talking about how horrible this is to knit. I don't think it is. So encouragement from me to you. It's okay. You can do it. You got this. It's nothing else than just doing cables. And uh, But all you're doing is just knit all the time. So you don't have to do like purl stitches in between the cables. You just pass around these two stitches by one stitch all the time. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about that, uh, just feel free to ask. I just wanna be encouraging. I think it's not that big of a deal. And I was talking to a friend the other day, we were knitting together last weekend and uh, she said, oh, I thought that was really hard to do. And then I showed her and she was, she had never done cables before, but she was like very, scared to do the Ingrid sweater because of those things in there. And I said, no, don't worry about it at all. And then I showed her how to do it. And then um, she was like, oh, that's not too bad actually. Yeah, so some encouragement if you are thinking that you maybe can't do it, you can do it. You got it. <laughs> oh, how to live in the city. <laughs> Um, I want to show you how I join yarn. So I am at the end of the ball now and I was already doing it a little bit. I wasn't really thinking about that. I wanted to show you, but here we go. So here's my old yarn and what I'm doing is spit splicing. So you can use your spit or some water. So I, I will show you on the new ball of yarn. What I do is I just take apart this this piece, this end piece, and then you see that it's like three strands. So it's three plies that have been like uh, spun together. And what I do is one of the three, I just like take off and then you'll have two strands and it will be different for every uh, type of yarn. And then I have two here I already did that on the end of that I have attached. So I have two little strands there and I just lay them over each other. So here's the one yarn, here's the other yarn. 
and I just lay them over each other, put them in my hand, put some water on it, or when you're not watching, when I'm not videotaping this, I use my spit. But I'm not going to do that <laughs> while I film myself. Um, <laughs> so then it's like kind of wet in your hand, not too much, just put your fingers in. And then you roll. Maybe I used a little too much water here. That's the great thing about using your spit. You can't really do too much. And then I roll, roll, roll. And then you have yarn attached. So now I have a new ball attached. And you can only do this with non-superwash, 100% wool yarn. So at least I think you can use it when it's mixed with anything. But yeah. So there you go. That's how I do that. Um, oh yeah, and there's one thing that I wanted to tell you about that I'm proud of because I did an alteration. Um, I have done this like these pearl rows on the shoulder. I don't know if you can tell. There you go. So what you do is you make the back, you pick up stitches for the front sides and then you start doing short rows in this moss stitch, but then when I looked at the pictures of this uh, pattern, I didn't really like the way that it looked. It looked a little messy, and I thought it needs something to break it up. And if you look at the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit, um, you, she has some uh, eyelets there, so some eye, uh, an eyelet row here uh, after you pick up. I don't have the pattern, so I don't know exactly what she does, so what I thought is doing one of these two row uh, pearl rows, like there is here in the pattern, there's three in a row, like they have been used throughout this pattern. So I used that to kind of break it up and I put all the alterations that I made in my project page, in my Ravelry project page. Um, and I just, made sure that I did those two rows and then started the uh, short rows in pattern. And I feel like it makes it look a lot neater because um, yeah, it's get, it gets broken up. I hope you understand what I mean. And I will we'll have put in a picture of what it looks like in the pattern. Uh, I think this looks a lot more neat. Um, yeah, and I'm happy with that alteration, so. If you're interested in doing that too, then just look at my Ravelry project page. Um, one other thing, I have, I'm just under a rant today, but I kind of feel like it's nice. I'm just sharing all my thoughts. I wanted to make this one pattern from here. This one, the Gia zipper sweater. And I have been wanting to make it in this boucle yarn. Um, when I was in South Africa, I got a few balls of boucle yarn from African Expressions. That's a South African brand. That's the same brand, yarn brand that I made for the, used for the socks. Uh, the uh, riverbed socks, those mohair socks. Um, and I bought some boucle yarn and I have some drops boucle yarn. And the one from South Africa is brown and the one from Drops is white. And I thought it would be so cool to make one of those zipper sweaters in boucle. And especially because it's a drop shoulder, I was thinking to make the whole like yoke until like here in one color and then do the sleeves and the bottom of the body in the other color. So, I think that would be super pretty. And I don't know if I'm gonna do the white here and the brown there or the other way around. I almost feel like if there's white on your sleeves, it will get dirty quicker. So maybe it's a good idea to do the white here and the brown here. I don't know, but I think that would be so cool. And I think I'm gonna hold it together with a light fingering yarn that I have from JC Rennie, one of those cones that I have. I have it in beige and uh, yeah, it uses four millimeter needles. So 
So I might need to go to four, four and a half and then just go down a needle size because I think the boucle with a strand of yarn will be a larger gauge than what they have for the four millimeter. But just wanted to share that because I'm so excited about it. Yeah. All right, I need a break. I'll be right back. A few more things that I worked on or that I am working on. Um, first off, I have this huge cardigan that I've been working on and I feel like I have been talking about this I did, but I haven't really have talked about it that much. <laughs> so I had all of this uh, Drops Melody yarn, which is a super fluffy, super soft yarn. I bought this because I made a sweater in this uh, light blue yarn uh, a long time ago, and I thought it was so nice and fluffy and I had a lot of leftovers. And then I thought, oh, I want to make something with a lot of different colors. And then I bought all these different colors, but then I didn't really like them together. Um, <laughs> that might sound weird because I am using them together. And I still don't know if I'm super happy about the combination. But my idea was to just have a really big cardigan, like a long one. Um, and I have made this cardigan for my mom a long time ago, last year for her birthday, uh, which was stockinette on the sleeves and garter for the body. And because it's a cardigan, then you mostly do knit stitches everywhere because the cardigan, the body is worked back and forth and the sleeves are in the round. And then the only purling you have to do is on the wrong side in the yoke because it was a raglan. So I did the exact same thing with this yarn and then just spread out all these different uh, stripes. Um, oh, my needle was stuck. Um, spaced out all these different stripes. And I do think the overall look will look good with the stripes, but I don't know about the colors. But I'm happy about the stripes. And um, yeah, so this is my own pattern. Uh, I just uh, calculated all the the size that I wanted and I made that one for my mom based on her measurements and then I made some alterations for these for this uh, cardigan and it's so nice and soft and light because uh, yeah this yarn is just super nice and soft I really like Drops Melody but I also just wanted to get this out of stash and like use it for something that I can use in actual uh, like daily daily life um, because yeah, I work from home a lot. Usually the part that gets the coldest for me is like my hips, like the side of my hips, a little higher than my bum. Um, yeah, so that's why I wanted to make this cardigan. And um, I wanted to show you uh, today where it was at, so I'll keep knitting on it. And one thing that I did is for the black, I put in some uh, glitter just for the fun of it because why not and uh yeah i think it will be a really nice cozy cardigan uh i might just make another one in like one color or uh, pick out some more like brighter colors maybe white and then do the stripes in bright uh pink and bright uh orange like hot pink hot orange that would be really pretty too i think but I just wanted to use up the yarn that I had. Um, and it's super quick, eight millimeter needles. And I think I am calling it my Cardi rope. <laughs> Cause it's like, I'm gonna do an I cord around the edging here and the bottom. And then I'm gonna do uh, like, a, like a tie around the waist. So no buttons. So it's gonna be like a rope. I think it will be cute, but I don't know if the colors are that cute, but it's nice and soft. And the sun is coming out again. It's really not too bright for my eyes, so that's okay. And I think you can just see things clearer, more clearly, so that's okay. Um, yeah, that's the cardigan, um, but priority is this one and the socks. 
And then I wanted to show you one other pair of socks that I have casted on when I was in the US after uh, finishing my sweater and my uh, riverbed socks. So this sweater. Um, and it is another lace sock. And I am knitting them on two millimeter needles and I'm doing them two at a time. So there's two little socks and I did a heel turn. And these are the, I printed out a bunch of patterns to take with, uh, sock patterns for when I was finished this one because this was all sock yarn. So then I could use all of the leftovers for socks, which is a big tip for if you're going on a holiday and you're knitting a sweater, maybe from sock yarn, then to bring, it's, it's really nice because then you can use the leftovers for socks and you can just think of what you want to do. So I brought some color work socks, patterns and everything. Anyway, so here's also, this was also my cheat sheet for the stripe height sweater. But these are the petal drop socks by Handmade by Florence. Um, she has a YouTube channel too. And these were a free pattern. Um, and I thought they were looking really cute. Um, and I wanted to cast them on. So I did. Uh, and I did some alterations. I did my favorite heel flap with the garter bumps on the sides. And uh, yeah, I just love the way that this heel looks. So this is also included in my sock pattern, this heel. I just love it. So I didn't do the heel that she suggested, but I did my own heel flap. And yeah, there's not that much to say other than I'm working on them. Uh, they are a little smaller than I thought. I am making the smallest size and I did go down needle size, but I made the Una socks before, which is also a lace sock and they ended up being pretty big. So I felt like I wanted to go down a needle size to not have that same, uh, like to have big, too big a socks. Also what I did is I made the leg a lot shorter. So I did a lot less uh, repeats of the pattern. Um, otherwise it would have been a lot longer and I don't have that much yarn. So this is all the yarn that I have left. One of them is knit from the inside, one from the outside. And this is <laughs> kind of, starting to become a mess, um, but that's okay. Yeah, so I hope I'll have enough to finish the socks. And if I don't, I'll just use one of the other yarns that I have still from left over from my sweater, maybe the yellow, and it will just look a little weird to have like the toe in yellow. Um, but when you're wearing shoes, you won't be able to see that part. So it's okay. Um, yeah, so really on a sock kick, one more thing I want to show you that I have worked on in the US as well, um, and that is this, whoops, <laughs> I have been uh, trying to make the, uh, like a nice ribbed hat kind of loosely based on the weekend hat by Petite Knits, but I don't have her pattern, so I haven't, uh, like I can't base anything off of her, her pattern. Um, but I wanted to make a top-down hat in a bright yellow color. And you have seen this one before, this is the neon yellow that I showed you before. And then I have this, this yarn, which is, Lang something something. Mm, don't think I have the labels. Lang with camel in it, uh, a fluffy yarn with camel in it. Uh, and I'm holding them together to create this hat. The only thing is that it looks very marled. Um, and there, you can see it really well but it also looks pretty nice and i have done the increases in a nice like x 
and I have done lifted increases and I have ripped it out after the first time because um, I wanted to have one line here but if you do lifted increases you really use so you have the normal like make one right might make one left type of increases but with lifted increases you use uh, one of the legs of your stitch so then it disappears so actually you wouldn't say so but here's two stitches so there's two like ragman stitches and then you use two legs on the outside for the lifted increases and then it looks like there's one raglan stitch i just say raglan stitch so you know that i mean that middle stitch but I think this worked out and especially looking at it after a while, I think it looks pretty good. Um, the only thing is that it's a little marled, but that's okay. Um, and the reason I'm doing it top down is I just want to use up all the yarn that I have um, of this yarn, the fluffy yarn. And I want to make a similar fold kind of thing. So a thick fold, triple fold. Um, just like the weekend hat by Petite Knits. So I think that will look really nice. Um, yeah, so I'm just freehanding that. If you want a similar looking hat, I would say look at the weekend hat by Petite Knits. Um, yeah, I think that was everything. Um, I think you can finally kind of see the beautiful color of this sweater. I'm just so, so happy with it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think that was everything. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was kind of a longer podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, have you seen that we're super close to hitting a thousand subscribers? So hi everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please help me get into the thousand subscribers. Uh, and like liking this video uh, or commenting if you want to. Um, yeah, it's been really fun to make YouTube videos and it's really cool that there's a thousand people that ever hit that subscribe button. That's like the crazy thing to think about that someone watched something of me and then thought, yeah, I like this person, subscribe. That's weird. Like, so thank you for doing that. And uh, I will see you in a new video very soon. So, bye.